Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting video. Today, we're diving into an essential tool for data analysis within Python, which is known as Pandas. Now, in this complete guide, we will cover all important functions and methods that are critical for data analysis using Pandas. Whether you're a beginner or looking to refresh your skills, this video will be your go-to resource for mastering Pandas. So before we jump into the functions and methods, let's understand what Panda is. Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Pandas is an open source Python library used for data manipulation and analysis. It's built on top of NumPy and provides two primary data structures. First one is a series and second one is a data frame. Series is a one dimensional labeled array, which looks like a single column data. And data frame is a two dimensional labeled data structured resembling to a table, which has rows and column data. Now for using pandas, the first thing that you need to do is to obviously install your pandas library into your environment, similar to what we did for NumPy. So you again, write a pip install statement to install the pandas library. Once you have installed that, you need to import pandas into the environment. And the way to do that is simply import pandas as pd. Now for this particular session, I'm going to upload the data that I'm working with today onto the drive or the Google cloud platform so that Google Colab can read that data easily. However, if you're working on a local software like Jupyter Notebook, you can keep the data set onto your system and copy paste the path later on when we are actually working with the data set. For those who are actually using Google Colab, this is what you need to do. So when you click this folder icon, this files icon here, there is already a sample data set folder here, which you will have once you log into Google Colab, but we are not going to use this. I'm going to drag and drop another data, which is a WHO COVID data that I downloaded from Kaggle. However, this data set has some changes made to it so that we can cover all the topics that is going to be covered in this particular video. Okay. So in case you want to download this exact data, I'm going to paste the link in the description. You can download it from there. Let me just quickly drag and drop the data set onto this panel here. Okay. I have my data here. I'm just going to drop it onto this panel. So my CSV file has been uploaded here. Now one quick thing to note here, when you are dropping your data set in this panel, like what I did, this is a temporary drop. Okay. So when this session ends and I close this window, this data will also disappear. So in case you want to keep that data set so that you can use it later on, what you need to do is you need to drop your data or upload your data onto your Google drive. And once that is done, you can click on this button here, which says mount drive and mount your Google drive in this environment. Once that is done, you can just follow this step that I'm doing here. You just go to this data set that you see and click on this three dot icon and click on copy path. Okay. Now you have the path of the data set, which has been uploaded either through Google drive or the temporary method that I've just shown. Now to analyze the data, we need to actually load it and read it in pandas. So, this is how you read a CSV file in Panda. You just have to write pd dot read underscore CSV, open a bracket and inside quotes, just paste the path that we just copied from here. Once that is done, you can execute and it will read the entire data set and show you the output as well. Now, in case you do not have an CSV file and instead you have an Excel file, Reading an Excel file is also very simple. You just have to write pd dot read underscore Excel and then open up the bracket and then again paste the path. For those of you who are actually using data set from your local systems and actually using local softwares like Jupyter Notebooks, the process remains the same. However, when you copy paste your path here, it might occur that you receive a error and you're receiving that error because the forward slashes are not considered within the string. Python get confused and consider this as a special character. So in order to resolve that, all you have to do is insert another forward slash 
after every forward slash within your path. So hope that is clear. There are many other data sets that we can read into our Python environment, including JSON, SQL databases and others. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to cover those formats as well. I'll be happy to do that. Now moving on to the next step, we need to actually explore the data set that we just loaded onto the environment. First one is to identify the basic information about your data set. We have a couple of methods to do that. Let's say you want to check the first few rows within your data set and, and check what the data is all about. So I'm going to first assign the data set into a data frame variable. So df is equal to pd.read. Once that is done, I'm going to write df.head and open up the brackets. It's going to give me five rows from the top of your data. So now you can just have a quick preview what your data looks like. Similarly, if you want to check the last five rows, you can do that as well. df.tail and this will give you the last five items. Similar to NumPy, pandas also support shape method. So if I just write df.shape, it will tell me how many rows and columns this particular data frame has. Then let's say I want to check some summary statistics for your numerical columns. For that, you can just write df.describe, open brackets and execute. And this will give me count, mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum and percentile values for all the numerical values that we had in our data. Finally, if you want to check the data type of each and every column that is there in your data frame, you can just write df.info and execute. And this will give you a couple of important metrics about the columns that are there in your data and its data type. Now, after we have gathered some information about your data, let's say you want to select a couple of columns from your entire data set. So to select a single column from your data set, all you have to do is write df and write the column name within quotes let's say country and remember python is case sensitive so if you write small letters here this will not work you would have to write the exact name which is there in your column header once you've done that you have this column selected you can assign this column to a different variable here and then obviously use that new data frame variable for any other purposes let's say you want to select not one but multiple columns okay for that you need to write df inside square bracket add one more square bracket and then write your column name so country and new deaths okay within quotes okay so it will select those two columns from the data frame we have selected columns but let's say you want to filter out the data and select only certain rows based on certain logic. So let's say you want to create a new data frame where the new deaths are greater than 100. So this is how you're going to do that. You're going to write df inside square bracket, enter the column name, which is new death, and you're going to write the condition, which is greater than 100. And outside of this df, you need to write another df and place the entire thing inside a square bracket. Once you've done that, it will only show you the rows where the new deaths are greater than 100. Now, let's say instead of getting the values within the rows, you just want to check which all values are greater than 100 and which all values are not greater than 100. You can just do that by using this last statement, which says df new deaths greater than 100. And the output will look something like this, wherein it's simply giving us the rows and it's telling us which row has greater than 100 value and which one has less than or equal to 100 values. So once you have explored your data and found out some few information about your data, now comes the stage where you want to clean your data. So there are few methods that you can use to clean your data. So the first one is checking for missing values. Okay, so I'm going to write df dot is null and execute. This will tell me if your data set has any null values in it or not. Now, once you've identified whether you have null values or not, you can choose to drop those values or you can choose to assign some new values in place of those null values. Okay. So in order to drop those values, you need to write df dot drop na and this will drop those null values. And in case you want to fill some new value instead of dropping it you need to write df dot fill na and you need to enter the value which you need to fill instead of those missing values so i'm going to enter zero and run this 
then we have method to check for duplicate values. So if you want to check whether your data has duplicate values or not, you need to write df dot duplicated and execute. Now it is telling me that at the last rows, we have couple of duplicate values. So I want to remove those. So in order to remove duplicate values, you can just write df dot drop underscore duplicates and run this. So now it has removed those rows. Earlier we had 683 rows at the end. Now we have 677. Okay, so it has removed a couple of rows. Now let's look at some data manipulation techniques. First one is sorting. So let's say you want to sort the entire thing in an ascending order uh, by a certain column. So you can do that. You can just write df dot sort underscore values and you need to mention by which column. So I'm going to write by is equal to column name, let's say country and ascending is equal to true. You run this and it will sort the entire data set based on the country column. Then we have grouping data. Now this is required when you need to categorize your data or club your data in certain categories. Let's say you want to group your data on the basis of country and you need to check the total number of new cases which happened in those countries. Okay. So what you have to do is you just write, let's say a new variable GP for group data. I'm going to write DF dot group by and then the column name. So in this case country. So it has grouped the data on the basis of country. Now I can use that data frame that we created and apply a aggregation method there. So I'm going to use sum and run this. So it will group the data on the basis of country and then sum all the numerical values. Now, since we only required country and new cases here. So what we can do is we, while creating this GP data, you can also have an additional statement written here. And what we can do is just write column names here. So country is one column and second one is new underscore cases. I'm going to run this and finally run the sum again. And it will going to give me only two columns. First one country and second one new cases. And this one being the sum of the new cases. Now similar to sum, we also have mean count, etc. In case you want me to cover those. Uh, let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to do that. So now let's say you want to add a new column to your data frame and we're going to use the D of data frame again. In the D of data frame, you have a column for country and you need the first three characters from the country column and have that into a new column. So how do we do that? First, you need to write DF and then open up a square bracket, enter your new columns name. So I'm going to just name it code and press equal to and then write df again, insert the column name, which this new column will be based upon, which is country and dot str. Again, open up square bracket. And if you remember our indexing rule, just start with a colon sign and write three and run this. And if I check the data with a df dot head, you're going to see that new column in the end, which says code. And this has three characters from the country column. Okay. Now let's say you've added a new column. Now you want to delete a column from your data frame. So we're going to delete that new column that we just created. So to delete, you can just write df dot drop, open up a bracket and within a bracket inside codes, you need to write the column name that you want to drop. In this case, I want to drive, drop this code. And the next parameter is whether you want to delete a row or a column. We want to delete a column. So I'm going to write axis is equal to one. And then this is very important. There is an optional parameter, which is called as in place. If you write in place is equal to true, this means that that column will be deleted from the main data frame. But if you say in place is equal to false, then it's going to create a copy of a data frame and then delete column from there, not from the original data frame. So whatever your requirement may be, use this option accordingly. Now, if I run this and I'm going to write df dot head again and check whether that column has been deleted or not. And as you see, it has been deleted. Okay. Now, finally, once you have done all these, it's time to visualize your data. Okay. Now, 
I'm going to show you some basic plotting options. There are other advanced stuff which we're going to cover later on in future videos. But for now, let's cover these basic plots. First one is to create a line plot. So you can just write df dot plot, open up a bracket. You need to mention the x axis. So I'm going to choose date underscore reported and y axis. We're going to choose, let's say new cases. Finally, the third parameter is for the kind of chart we're going to create. You just write kind is equal to and we are need to create a line chart and you just run this and instantly Python will create a chart for you. Similarly, I'm going to just copy paste this code and let's create a scatter plot. So instead of line, I'm going to write scatter in the same code and run this. And this has created a scatter plot for us. Let's create a histogram. Histogram is simpler. You just write df, open up the square bracket. And then inside this, I'm going to write new cases and then dot hist and open up a bracket and run this. This will create a histogram for you. So with this, we have covered all major functions and methods which are there to read, clean, manipulate and visualize your data using pandas. With this knowledge, you are well equipped to handle real world data sets and derive valuable insights. So with that, I'm going to end this video for now. If you found this video helpful, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell icon so that you do not miss any content that I upload. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.